The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. See, we have to wait for the computer to tell us what to do. That's the world we live in today, right? <laughs> okay. It is Thursday, May 16th, 2024, 6.30 p.m., and I'd like to welcome everyone to the regular council meeting for the Village of Royal Palm Beach, and I'd like to say a special welcome to all of the bright, bright, smart, young uh, children, kids, young men and women now, I guess, and especially all of the parents and family members. Welcome this evening. This is a special occasion for you and your, your children and, and your family. So if everyone would stand, please, and join us in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, Diane, please let the record show that all members of the council are present. Yes, Mayor, I will. And as I just indicated, we're going to start this evening with our presentation of the $1,000 scholarship awards to 10 Royal Palm Beach graduating students, and congratulations on having graduated. <laughs> so I get to do the easy part. I get to stand down, st down here and get to take pictures and give out the checks well. <laughs> Vice Mayor uh, uh, Hamera will be actually calling folks out, and I understand we're going to have members of our EAB reading their wonderful bios on what they've been able to achieve, right? So let's get started with that. Sure. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, before we actually uh, start to hand out the checks, so I want to thank the Education Advisory Board members for doing such a great job with the interviews and throughout the entire year. It's been a remarkable year. Uh, it's always challenging when you have such great candidates uh, to pick among them. Uh, I know the deliberations took quite a while, and, and it was um, due to the, the outstanding quality. Uh, just for everybody's information, there were four particular categories that we emphasized uh, when considering who to select for the, the award of these scholarships. One was the leadership capacity. Another was academic achievement. The third was civic involvement. And the fourth were future goals. And uh, each one of the candidates had outstanding presentations and outstanding backgrounds that make all of us feel comfortable, or should feel comfortable about the future going forward. So congratulations to all of you all. And without further ado, I have the honor of announcing the following 10 recipients of the Village's $1,000 scholarships for the class of 2024. The first recipient is Nirvana Balcaron, who I understand is not here this evening, but we're going to go ahead and read uh, their bio. <laughs> so Nirvani Balcaron is a graduating senior from Seminole Ridge High School. She'll be attending Florida State University in the fall, majoring in exercise physiology. In high school, she played varsity soccer for the girls team, making it to regionals in her junior and senior years. She plans to continue her passion for soccer and fitness through her studies at FSU. Congratulations to Nirvani and her award will be mailed. Yes. <laughs> for, for the record, for the record. Uh, and the uh, next recipient is Olivia Bieri, who is also from uh, Seminole Ridge Community High School. Olivia Bieri was born and raised in Royal Palm Beach and is very thankful to the village for being selected as a scholarship recipient. Olivia will be graduating from Seminole Ridge High School. She has probably represented her student government association, National Honor Society, and the Thespian Honor Society. Olivia is a leadership Palm Beach County 2023 Grow graduate and was chosen to serve as a counselor for the South Florida Leadership Training Camp this summer. Olivia plans to attend Palm Beach State College in the fall and work for the Palm Beach County Library or School District while attending classes. Olivia hopes to transfer to Florida Gulf Coast University to continue her education. Congratulations, Olivia. Next 
recipient is Dylan Kareb. So Dylan is a resident of Royal Palm Beach where he lives with his mother. Uh, he went on uh, to go to school at Royal Palm Beach High School and continued in a, a pre-med program and pursued uh, ACE classes uh, to be eligible for an ACE diploma. Dylan has been a member of the National Honor Society since his sophomore year in high school. In addition, Dylan chose to pursue the dual enrollment program with Palm Beach State College and spent his senior year as an early admission student. Dylan, uh, Dylan is graduating with an ACE diploma and will be awarded his Associate of Arts degree from Palm Beach State University as well. Dylan will be moving on to the Florida State University Honors Program in August to pursue a bachelor's, master's program with STEM entrepreneurship and finance as his area of studies. Congratulations. <laughs> Go Seminoles. Our next recipient is. Interruption there. <laughs> Not unusual, by the way. It's uh, fairly typical. Um, our next recipient. Uh, is also from Royal Palm Beach Community High School, and that is Madison Garner. Madison Garner is a driven and dedicated individual with a passion for healthcare and academic excellence. Currently a senior at Royal Palm Beach High School, Madison plans to continue her academic journey at the University of Florida, where she plans to major in health sciences. Madison would like to become a doctor specializing in pediatrics. Her commitment to the medical field began early as she actively participated in a rigorous medical program throughout middle and high school. Madison's dedication and hard work didn't go unnoticed as she was recognized as a top 10 student in her graduating class. Her commitment to service extended beyond the classroom as she actively volunteered in her community and contributed her time to various school initiatives. With her blend of academic prowess, leadership skills, and passion for healthcare, Madison is poised to make a significant impact as she embarks on her next chapter of her journey at the University of Florida. Congratulations. <laughs> Congratulations. Our next recipient is also from Royal Palm Beach Community High School, Sydney Greenway Matthew. Sydney Greenway Matthew is a dedicated individual who has made significant contributions both academically and through community involvement. Sydney's journey began at Cypress Trails Elementary School, continued through Crestwood Middle School, and culminated at Royal Palm Beach Community High School. Currently, Sydney serves as an after school counselor at Cypress Trails Elementary. Beyond her professional role, Sydney has been an active member of various organizations, serving as the Florida Association of Student Council. District 5 Co-Vice President, DECA Director of Social Media, Dance Marathon Marketing Manager, Florida Future Educators of America Vice President of Socials, a member of National Honor Society and in the Best Buddies program. Sydney was also recognized as the 2024 Career and Technical Education Student of the Year and is a CIW Certified Professional. Congratulations. Congratulations again. Uh, our next recipient is also a Royal Palm Beach Community High School graduate now, we can say that since yesterday, uh, and that is Allison Leopard. Allison 
Jordan Leppert was born and raised in Royal Palm Beach. A recent graduate of Royal Palm Beach High School, she is excited to head to the University of North Florida in Jacksonville in the fall. She will be majoring in elementary education. She is excited about the opportunity to use her passion for learning and compassion for people to make a difference in the lives of children. Allison was an active member of the Royal Palm Beach High School Student Council and National Honor Society, as well as serving as the Florida Education Ed Educators Association president at her school. She earned over 600 community service hours supporting her school and the surrounding schools in Royal Palm Beach. After college, she hopes to return to Palm Beach County to teach. Congratulations. Our next recipient is also a Royal Palm Beach Community High School graduate, and that is Riley Manuel. Riley has created new clubs for Royal Palm Beach High School and community while tackling multiple college courses, clubs, and sports. As a student council member and soccer team captain, she was able to hone her leadership and community service skills. Riley's involvement in flag football has helped her to further develop her teamwork and strategic thinking abilities. This led her to continue her service work for summer camps and elementary schools. Riley started the dance marathon at Royal Palm Beach High School, which is a student-led, year-round philanthropic movement uniting students across the United States and Canada in raising funds for Children's Miracle Network Hospitals. Riley is graduating in the top 20% of his class and is eager to use her skills to make a positive impact. Thank you, Riley. Congratulations. <laughs> Our next recipient is Kinley Sider. Kinley is from Glades Day School. Kinley is a 17-year-old senior at Glades Day School in Belle Glade, Florida. She has lived in Royal Palm Beach her whole life and wouldn't change it for the world. She is currently the senior class president and National Honor Society vice president at her school. Additionally, she's a member of FFA, FCA, and participated in student ACEs throughout high school. She's passionate about maintaining good grades, receiving all A's throughout high school, and being the salutatorian of her class. She too is a Palm Beach State dual enrollment student and will be graduating high school with 24 college credits. She plans on attending Florida State University starting this summer, majoring in nursing with the goal to one day become a nurse anesthetist. She plans on coming back to Palm Beach County and working in a practice or hospital, maybe even both. Congratulations. <laughs> Our next recipient is Nevaeh Thompson from Royal Palm Beach High School. <laughs> Nevaeh is recognized as an honor roll student at Royal Palm Beach Community High School. She's an active member in many school activities and clubs, including DECA, Fosters in Need, and the Yearbook Committee. Nevaeh was able to maintain all the responsibilities and activities required for the clubs while successfully completing 196 hours of community service. Ms. Thompson will be attending Palm Beach State College in the fall of 2024 to seek a degree in radiologic technology. Congratulations. <laughs> So we, we have one more to announce or one more bio to read. Um, uh, <laughs> uh, so the, the uh, final recipient is Tyler Wink, who is from uh, Wellington Community High School. Unfortunately, Tyler wasn't able to be here this evening, but we do have his bio. Yes. Uh, so Tyler Wink is a graduating senior at Wellington High School and plans on attending Florida State University to major in business. He takes his education very seriously and is third in his class. In the future, he hopes to go to law school, become a lawyer, and practice corporate law. Great. <clears throat> Thank you. 
We may have to change the criteria that next the year. Criteria? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, change the criteria next year. Way too many FSUs. Diversity in schools. We need more diversity. We do. Okay, <clears throat> we're going to give a, a break for a moment and give everyone a chance who wants to escape, give them an opportunity to escape, and they won't have to sit here for the rest of the meeting, and then we will resume our meeting this evening. <clears throat> Pictures out in the lobby. <laughs> That's fine. It's all good. Taking advantage of our beautiful lobby. That's what right? one of the reasons it's there for. Huh? Sure. The right? They need to go out to the fountain. Okay, we're going to resume now at this mo moment. Um, this is interesting. We have another special recognition <laughs> plaque to give, and this is a rec special recognition for Councilwoman John Rodowski for receiving a 2024 Home Rule Hero Award from the Florida League of Cities. I have to ask Jeff and Jan, how did you guys pull this off? <laughs> I'm sure there was hard work involved. Well, it was uh, a lot of time with committee meetings and things of that nature, which uh, oftentimes we're up in Orlando, and then, of course, the wonderful trips to Tallahassee and well, and the 9 o'clock Monday morning. Make you want it, me to go on? I no, no, make it, I've made the trips to Tallahassee. I, I, I get it. But just let me read our, our, our message here. Is, um, as I said, Councilwoman Jan Radowski, she's being honored with the 2024 Home Hero Award for her outstanding advocacy efforts throughout 2024 legislative session by the Florida League of Cities, and I think this is outstanding work, and we're going to have another group photo. Thank you. Another group photo.
thank you. I, 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 I will just say that um, I don't do I don't do this kind of work to get recognition like that. It's 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 nice, but um, being able to represent not only the village but all our 39 municipalities at the state level for things that are really important to us is um, it's that's what's rewarding. So just want to let you know. Congratulations. Thank you. Just as a side, I'd like to just share with some information with everyone that um, the National League of Cities this year is celebrating the 100th year of being in existence. And one of the ways they're commemorating this 100 year celebration is they're making a bus tour of 100 cities across the US. And guess what? One of the cities that they're going to be visiting in this tour, good old Royal Palm Beach. So they'll be here on the 20th to visit with us on this bus tour. And we're very honored that we were selected because there are a lot mm -hmm. of cities in the United States of America. And to be on their list of 100, this, I think, is something we should appreciate and, and we do. So the 20th, Monday, right? Yes. OK, moving right along, what else do we have here? We have a proclamation. <coughs> and with, here he is, OK. <laughs> Our recipient. It's a proclamation uh, for the National Public Works Week. Um, it reads as follows Where public works services provided in our community are an integral part of our citizens' everyday lives, and whereas the support of an understanding and informed citizenry is vital to the efficient operation of public work systems and programs such as water sewers, streets, highways, public buildings, and solid waste collection. And whereas the health, safety, and comfort of this community greatly <coughs> depends on these facilities and services, and the quality and effectiveness of these facilities, as well as their planning, design, construct and construction, is vitally dependent upon the efforts and skill of public works officials. And whereas the efficiency of the qualified and dedicated personnel who staff public works departments is materially influenced by the people's attitude and understanding of the importance of the work they perform. Now, therefore, in this day uh, in, uh, in the village of Royal Palm Beach, we proclaim the week of May 19th, 2024, as National Public Works Week in the village of Royal Palm Beach, and I call upon all citizens and civic organizations to acquaint themselves with the issues involved in providing our public works and to recognize the contributions which public works officials make every day to our health, safety, comfort, and quality of life. Signed and sealed the 16th day of May 2024. I just want to say, we know when there's a problem that happens, when those pipes break and things come out of the pipes that we don't want to see coming out the pipes, these are the guys we call on to try to fix that problem. And hopefully they can prevent it from happening. Mm -hmm. So we're going to give this clap. Paul Webster, who is happy to be on the Webster Public Works. infrastructure. Okay, moving right along. This time we're going to have our reports. There was this morning, I'd just like to share, there was a, a transportation planning agency meeting this morning. Uh, there were some updates on the TIP, uh, at, which is the five-year work plan. There was nothing in the plan today that was presented that has any direct impact on our area in Royal Palm Beach. And um, was there something else that they, they had coming up with the, uh, was it the bicycle day or? Uh, it's bicycle month. This is, bi yeah, I, let's not forget, this is still bicycle month. Right. So if you haven't ridden your bicycle in a long time, dust it off, <laughs> right? By the way, we have what, 60 miles plus miles in the village of Royal Palm Beach of bike paths? Yes. You know, go out and explore that si those 60 miles, all right? One day maybe we might do something officially and, and get everybody together and, and go over those 60 miles. But uh, this, they just reminded us of that, so I want to remind you of that. And Ray, I think you, your, your, your staff is already working with the updates that we have to give them for the long-term plan. Yes. 
Okay, good, because they mentioned that too, that the deadline is upon us, but I know we were working on it. Um, with that though, we'll start with uh, Selena. Good evening, everyone. Uh, the soccer season is wrapping up this week, so they're gonna start the re uh, renovations on the field. So just please watch the signs that are out there because it does take three months for them to fix the field so that it is ready for the next season. So watch those signs when it says, please keep off. Uh, Memorial Day is May 27th, and we're gonna be over at Veterans Park at 9.30 for a presentation. Breakfast starts at nine o'clock. Uh, the golf center driving range, the lights are being repaired out there at Commons Park, so just watch out for the signs that are posted. Our Youth Summer Sports Academy camps start the first week of June, so we have basketball, volleyball, and fishing, so you can sign up for those. Um, we just wrapped up our two-day strategic planning session, and then we have our Citizen Summit on Monday, May 20th at 6 p.m. at the Cultural Center. So please make sure that you stop by to, for that. And then um, we attended a Cultural Diversity Day at Veterans Park. Thank you very much for CAFSI for always spearheading that and putting that on. It was a wonderful program, um, and just really nice to see all the different um, groups that come out there. So you always learn something out there. Um, our Palm Beach County Fire Rescue, and I've mentioned this before about their whole blood use that they're using, they're, um, they actually were able to save a six-year-old life for that using the whole blood. Light, the whole blood. Um, and unfortunately, it's on tonight right now, but uh, the PBC, NBC Nightly News with Lester Holt, they're featuring EMS agencies carrying whole blood, so they're showing that, so just make sure you check back up and see with it. And all of our events you can find on our website at royalpalmbeachfl.gov. Um, I do have a question that I'd like some clarification on. Speaking, you mentioned about the National League of Cities. So, uh, Mr. Village Manager, just for clarification, is that currently in our budget for our current year? Yes, we have it within our, <clears throat> within our budget. It wasn't something specifically listed, but in our strategic plan session, um, I feel I got direction from council to go ahead and join at this time, evaluate that after a year, and, um, June of next year and then decide at our budget workshop in July of next year whether to continue with membership there. But I feel at the strategic workshop, I, got, I did get direction to um, expend that money and I, I do have an, a, a line item that we will not be going over the, um, the amount of money in that account line and we, that's what we'll be using. So just for clarification, I was under the impression at strategic plan that you were gonna have them do a presentation to find out whether we would agree to join or not, and that would be for we, October. No, that, the way he, the way the village manager described it is what the takeaway was. We did talk about that, but we ultimately said, let's sign up for this one year and then evaluate it, and the presentation is to come for next year to tell us, you know, we've been a member for a year, here's what we think worked, what didn't work, why it was good, what, that was what the presentation was for, so that we could decide the future. Signing up this one year doesn't mean that we're gonna sign up again next year, we have to go through that review process to determine that. I understand that. I just wanted to make sure that I wasn't, I was not clear that it was starting immediately. Yeah. I was under the impression it was starting October 1st if we okay. decided to do that. Right. And I was under the same impression, but I thought the direction was well, that we are starting in October or when, whenever the new no, year was. No, that, okay. that, yeah, no, that, think about it. The, the purpose of the discussion about the presentation was we wanted to have a tangible experience to say, let's evaluate, was this something that we, that we should continue to be part of? So that's really the way it went down. Does anyone have any other questions on that? No, I'm fine. Did you have a different? No, I, th I think so. Yeah, so. It's okay. so I would it was, yeah, we, we misunderstood the implications of it, obviously. We cover a lot of stuff at those meetings, I get That's it. all right, so I would just like to state for the record, though, because we already belong to two League of Cities. We're at Palm Beach County, just a second, we're at Palm Beach County and we're at Florida State League of Cities. So I do not think it is a good use of our funds at this time to join a third League of Cities, and especially since we're using um, our reserves to balance our budget. So I don't think it's a good use of our funds at this time if we want to rediscuss it and start it for October and possibly put it on the next year's uh, budget. That's a discussion I'm willing to have, but I don't agree with All doing right. it You're now. You're on record as not supporting this for this year. And we'll, we'll leave it at that because we have everyone else is in agreement. Uh, but that's fine. I just want to make okay. sure that we're clear on, on the price of that, though. Record. Okay, that's fine. No problem. Anything else? No, nope, that completes our report. Thank you. Which, um, yeah, yesterday we had uh, another graduation over at the fairgrounds. The vice mayor and I uh, were in attendance and it was, I, I just like to thank not only the school district, but the fairgrounds do a wonderful job in 
you know, getting everyone in, getting everyone out, and there's so many different moving parts, and at least from my perspective, I don't, <laughs> I don't see anything falling through the cracks. There, there were no problems whatsoever. Um, I'd like to say congratulations to our valedictorian, Ashley Lorenzano, who gave a nice speech, as well as Alexis Dinkley, the salutatorian, who did so as well. And um, on a non-academic note, we do have several members from our track team at Royal Palm Beach High that are heading up to Jacksonville to complete, compete in the state meet this weekend. And I'd like to recognize those number, members being Sky Zwerner, Ethan Thomas, Benny Mervin, Emerson Dort, and last but not least, Riley Valentis. Riley Valentis, okay. Absolutely. He's All in there right. somewhere, so uh, that, that's a good thing, and it's a proud way to end his high school career because he graduated yesterday as well. So hopefully they do well, and have a good Congratulations. Trip. And that's all, Mr. Mayor. Okay. Great. Jeff. Uh, so uh, we had our last Education Advisory Board meeting of this school year, and um, in addition to uh, talking about the scholarships and the results, we. Um, we had a, a presentation from the school district staff uh, giving us a summary of what took place in Tallahassee insofar as things that actually affect our schools. Uh, there were a large number of, of issues brought up, but um, the budget was probably one of the noteworthy ones, which resulted in a 2.7% increase in student funding in Palm Beach County, with an additional 2.8 million uh, allocated to safe schools and $1.3 million allocated to mental health uh, assistance. Uh, among the bail, bills passed, and there were obviously a lot of them, uh, was a, a bill, HB 1285, which, which makes a really good change. It changes the school. If, if the, the uh, Board of Education at, at the state level changes the grading model or the grading scale, that change will not go into effect until the following school year, which at least gives the schools a chance to make adjustments and prepare for it. That hasn't been the case, so that was really good news. Uh, a lot of congratulations this time of year. Uh, among them are uh, for Royal Palm Beach Elementary, H.L. Johnson, the Cypress Trails Elementary, Western Academy, charter schools, all of which have been selected, and many of them are repeat, Florida Schools of Excellence, so congratulations to them. Uh, congratulations to Adrian Barnes, for representing Crestwood Middle School as a 2024 Ben Carson Scholarship recipient. Wow. A lot of good things coming out of Crestwood Middle School. And of course, congratulations to all 100, 584 graduating seniors from Royal Palm Beach High School who received their diplomas yesterday at the fairgrounds. As uh, Councilman Valenta said, um, the exib exhibit area was packed and uh, it was a great event. It was really well done. Uh, the um, congratulations also, of course, extends to uh, Principal Michelle Fleming uh, and to the, uh, the high school faculty and staff. Uh, this is her third year, uh, actually, at Royal Palm Beach High School, and she's, she's done remarkably well at the school. Uh, the class of 2024 racked up more than $2.2 million in scholarships with 53 ACE diplomas totaling about $1.2 million in Bright Future scholarships and about 10 international baccalaureate diplomas, which were, will be awarded uh, later. Uh, as uh, Councilman Valentes was saying, the valedictorian, uh, Ashley uh, Lorenzo, um, pretty amazing, so was the salutatorian. Uh, they both did great uh, speeches, but um, really impressive. They're HPAs, which includes uh, the uh, advanced and also uh, uh, honors uh, activities. The HPA for the valedictorian uh, was 5.51, and for Alexis Dunkley, the uh, salutatorian, um, she came in a close second with 5.46 in so far as academic achievement. Really noteworthy is, uh, this is kind of characteristic of the classes that are coming out of Royal Palm Beach High School right now. So congratulations to them and to everybody, and a special congratulations to uh, a Mr. Riley Valantas, who, uh, whose family is very proud of him for more than just track, but for many, many things. And congratulations to his proud dad. Um, my final report item is uh, kind of a matter of um, uh, official business, a little bit of personal privilege in it. Uh, at the Board of County Commissioners meeting on May the 7th, 
Uh, Carolyn Hamara was appointed to the Palm Trans Service Board for a three-year term serving as a senior citizen representative for the county. Wow. Uh, yeah, the, the, the service board is composed of 13 at-large members who are delegated the authority to approve fixed route service adjustments and to serve as an advisory board on all other aspects of the county's public transportation system. And I think the first meeting is May the 28th. Is that right? Um, and, um, and so congratulations to her and to us um, being able to um, uh, you know, gather some insight and understanding about uh, uh, Palm Tran and the plans for enhancement that we know are coming. So I certainly hope so. That concludes your report? That completes my report. Okay. okay. Everybody already, I crossed out five things. <laughs> what happens when you laugh? Okay. Uh, you did leave me two good things to report, um, and I'm surprised uh, Selena left me this, but tomorrow is um, a band and food truck down at Commons. So I'm going to ask you, Selena, VAM band, who are they cover band for? Is it I'm Van Morrison? Sure. Could be, and I'm not sure because we have Mr... Uh, we have Mark here, so Mark can tell us. Washington. Yeah. Mark's gonna find out. He's gonna okay. find out. Our director of Parks and Rec <laughs> is gonna find out for us. Um, the council. I did. Yes. Uh, seven to <laughs> nine at Commons, always a good time. And then, of course, the Young at Heart prom is coming up on May 24th from four to seven. That's so cute. Uh, yeah. Wow. Um, so get your tickets and go to the prom. It's exciting. That concludes my report. Okay. <laughs> Ray. No reports, Mayor. Okay. Uh, just briefly, um, there's an organization called the International Municipal Lawyers Association, and it's a global group, and they go around and have their annual conferences all over. Uh, this year, they're going to be in Orlando. Um, and the last time they were in Florida, I think, was like 20 years ago or something. Um, but I was very um, excited um, through the Munici Florida Municipal Attorneys Association, which is part of the Florida League of Cities, was asked to be a speaker uh, at that. You were the speaker? Yeah, so okay. I'll be talking actually on the subject matter uh, of the class that I'll be teaching um, at William & Mary, which will be the week after that. So uh, I was very excited uh, about that. And then... Tuesday, uh, as I'm sure you all know, the League of Cities here in Palm Beach County is installing its new uh, officers at the Kravis Center. And when that meeting is gaveled adjourned, I will be on vacation for two weeks and Mitty will be driving the bus while I'm gone. So, is that, uh, is that the luncheon? Yes. 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 Wednesday yes. Okay. Good. So. Boy, we got a lot of things going on. Yes, sir. Right. Thank Everybody you. Everybody keep up the good work and commitment. Any more fun? <laughs> Steve, keep us know where you're going. Are you going anywhere fun? You don't have to tell us. My what? Are you going anywhere fun? I'm going somewhere fun. Good. You <laughs> 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 married. I want to know. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, um, Mr. Mayor, to answer Councilwoman Rudusky's question, Top 40 Funk, um, it is not a tribute band. It's a cover band. Okay, what's the so, difference? So, 40 funk, so... No, what's the difference between bit, tribute and cover? Oh, you're, cool band, you're, yeah, you're doing a mix. Fire, not just, uh, like, oh, it's a litany So, a tribute, artists. no, you're doing the, you're, you're doing the, the genre of 40s okay. funk. Okay. So, Wild Cherry to everything else. You know all that stuff, huh? Yes, okay. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. We remind you of some of you. Thanks for that, that, that update, all right? All right, with that, we'll move Thanks along, okay, with the agenda. <laughs> At this time, does anyone have a petition they'd like to present to the council? Now would be the time to do that. Seeing none, I'm going to close the forward into petitions for the evening, and now we're open for statements from the public on non-agenda items or consent agenda items. I do have some, pub some public comment cards here for non-agenda items. Before I go there, do we have any previous, uh, before the meeting? No, ma'am. Non-agenda items? Uh, uh, how about on the consent agenda? No, Mayor. No. Any hands raised? No, Mayor. Okay, so we'll move forward with the current cards I have here for non-agenda items, starting with Nikki Icekosol. I know I messed up your name.
What do you mean you put a one? Oh, really? That's what that was? Yeah. Okay, you're number two. No, no, we'll do, we'll do your order. That's okay. Oh, yeah. You want me to do number one first, or you, you still want, you want to go? Oh, you're Aaron Atkins. Okay. That's okay. Proceed. Is it turning on? All right. Great. Hello, Mr. Hamara. I here at a delegation meeting. Nice to see you. Uh, my name is Aaron Actis. I'm a citizen, as y'all, of Palm Beach County. I don't reside in um, Royal Palm. I reside in Jupiter. Um, I'm here today uh, to present some of the findings of the previous election of March 19, 2023. The goal here is to bring awareness to the voter turnout versus registration. Um, at this point, I cannot give you the municipal versus presidential because the data is all commingled. Um, as it turn, as if any of my uh, information is wrong, please let me know. Um, but as far as I know, you have 39,000 um, residents. Your population is 39,000, roughly. Um, it looks like your regist registered voters is 29,638. Out of those, your active voters are 17,386 which means you have unregistered voter amount of 15,000 and inactive voters of 6,000. Um, basically, your voter turnout for this election was 3,567, which basically is out of your registered voters, 15% turnout, and out of your active voters, 20%. Um, it's pretty much par for the course. Um, our supervisor of elections uh, very often doesn't reach over 20%, uh, 22% uh, out of 112,000. I think that we, need, we can do better with bringing our, um, the citizens to the ballot box, uh, maybe drive them on election day. Um, election day, one day, you turned out 1,137 votes, um, which is, I'm gonna say, uh, I think, to get better font, but I think it's 32% of your overall. Um, the vote by mail and um, early voting, which is over one month, the turnout was, let's say 60% 60, 60 roughly. So you can see that you actually get more for one day. The cost of early voting um, is enormous and the waste of resources. Also the vote by mail has very, the chain of custody we have, um, no best practice whatsoever. We've public records, the chain of custody um, papers, and they're, if you've ever seen them, you will be disgusted. Um, unfortunately, our supervisor of elections has now created a new barrier, which is a building <coughs> in uh, West Palm Beach. We had the tabulation building in um, Revere Beach, which was also very inaccessible. Um, but this new building, we're afraid, will be pretty much closed to the public. Um, she, she gathers the ballots a, a month in advance, and those are all stored in that building. So thank you for your time. Okay, thank you for your comments. And number two is, I, I don't want to mess up your last name again. Mickey is the first name. Give me, did we pronounce your last name for us? Hi, good evening. Um, my name is Mickey Isaacson. Good evening, Village of Royal Palm oh, Beach Public Servants. Okay. My name is Mickey Isaacson, and I'm a Palm Beach County resident and live in Boynton. I, like many others, believe the 2020 election was stolen. I've been observing at the supervisor of election for the last two years. This is not about Democrats or Republicans or any party affiliation. This is about stealing elections. Have you ever hosted a workshop on election integrity with your residents? Because that's something you, you might want to do. Do you know that the SOE tabulation center was moved from Riviera Beach to West Palm Beach in the middle of a presidential election year and refuses many of us a tour when we have made numerous requests? I invite you to contact her and um, see if you can't get a uh, tour with your residents. While Wendy Link says she is not scheduling tours, I, I urge you to, um, to use your town council of leadership and encourage your residents and yourselves to, to ask for one. You can see how she, um, she stores, um, sorts, duplicates, tabulates, and handles vote by mail ballots. 
In the past, our counties and cities and towns had a clear path to fair and honest elections through the municipality charters and ordinances. By the way of your residents vote, your city can do elections using three precincts with Aaron's uh, calculations without vote by mail and not using 18 different precincts that she has you guys um, sorted to go. In the past, the people were elected, not selected. That's only one letter off, the S. Today, cities and counties are tapping the officials into place while holding a token election and tapping the rest of the officials. Hence, they're selected. In the past, city clerks had to certify their own voter rolls and certify the election results and secure the results in their own municipalities. That's a very different process than municipalities have today. Today, a token local and federal elections are put through a centralized tabulation center and certified by a supervisor of elections. Do you know our SOE was appointed, tapped in by our governor, then she changed her party affiliation before running in the following election? That's a little strange. She has a $22 million budget and is asking for another $14 million additional to fund her new tabulation center. These tabulation centers are where uncertified machines are used, which are corrupt and hackable, and that's all over the news now. The supervisor election employs temporary staff who have not taken an oath to the Constitution, and they touch and count our ballots and our votes. The supervisor of election is certifying our elections with dirty voter rolls, no chain of custody for ballots, and allows the U.S. Postal Service to tamper with U.S. mail, which is a federal offense, by using postal bins to transport ballots. We are awake and we're watching. We're watching all 39 municipalities. And those, um, those organizations that you belong to, the League of Cities, the Palm Beach Charter, the National League of Cities, they're illegal and they're run by the Crown. Run by the who? All right, thank you for your oh. comments. Crown? Okay, number three is Candace Rojas. Greetings, public servants. Whenever any government becomes destructive, it is the duty of the people to abolish it. I am here to put you all on notice as a sovereign American, and I have requests for oath and bonds for each of you which is a pre-step to activate our military. Uh, I believe the military is the only way. Uh, foxes are guarding the hen house in all of the municipalities. And at a quick glance, your village appears very friendly, family friendly, lovely. Um, I pray there are good leaders here who have not committed treason, but regardless, I must boldly Intercede for those without a voice, defend the Constitution, and restore the Republic. The entire system is broken. The Constitution states that all of the power, not some of the power, belongs to we the people, not the employees, which are you guys. It also states that fraud vitiates everything, ab initio. If you've not already heard, there's a changing of the old guard, a paradigm shift that is taking place all across our nation. No more generational political nepotism, no more secret societies controlling the masses, no more appointed board members via the tap from the secret society handshake. The fake facade of power control is over. Did you know that the Palm Beach County is an illegal foreign corporation called the Palm Beach County Charter and Royal Palm Beach is also part of that charter? You use the home rule charter to attempt to shield yourself from liability and pass rules without needing state legislature. Royal Palm is a member of the League of Cities, which is a conflict of interest with your role as an employee of We the People. Why do you use taxpayer dollars to pay globalist organizations with connections to the United Nations and World Economic Forum? And tonight you naively gave awards for participation for such organizations. This tells me you all need retrained your town is not following the Constitution or common law. Instead, you are operating under maritime law and using fake statutes to penalize people. You charge illegal taxes, fines, citations, traffic tickets, and fees. You use restrictive boards and code enforcement to keep constituents in compliance when it should be the other way around. You're deceiving innocent residents in your village who do not ask questions and blindly trust your decision making. 
during March 2020 scandemic pandemic, some of you may have committed a crime against humanity by locking down people, closing public spaces and businesses, promoting the death vaccine, and restricting those who oppose taking those vaccines. We have not forgotten the tyranny and treason that was committed in 2020. Thank you, here are the letters. Okay, thank you. Thank you for your comments. Okay, next we have, I'm sorry, what did you say? No, not yet. We have one more, yeah, not, not, on, the, not on the agenda item. Um, I'm trying to read the writing here. Right off? Are they here? Michelle? Oh, I'm sorry, Michael, I'm, I, it's me, I can't read the writing, my bad. Is it, how did you pronounce your last name? Huh? Rada, Michael Rada. Rada. Okay. Talk about the Constitution, <laughs> because I think some people need to read the Constitution. You don't have to comment on okay. it, that's fine. <laughs> uh, I just wanna thank you, Selena. I was here to talk about the soccer fields. Um, my daughter plays at Royal Palm Strikers. Yeah. And for the past two years, I've been unhappy the condition of the soccer fields. They are playing in dirt and sand. And my question is, is the soccer, the cats complex part of the renovation? Okay. Uh, all I ask is that every year that, can you hear me? All I ask is that every year after soccer season, we do look at resodding the fields. There's a big increase in the amount of kids that are playing, and it's uh, dangerous, so please take that in consideration in the future. Um, secondly, question, I'm also a resident of Madison Green. I received some information that they are considering um, approving a Madison Green Country Club uh, hotel in my residence, in our neighborhood. So I just have a couple questions to know how far you are in discussions with the developer. Uh, what's the next step in approving, if it's gonna be approved? And I just wanna make sure that this is a open forum when it comes to this developer trying to get this hotel approved. All right, I'll, you wanted to say something about the soccer fields? If we, if we could break this up into two sections then, so I'll handle I'll the soccer. That. Yeah, yeah. Yes. okay. All right. All right. So actually two things is, um, I'm gonna ask Mark to come out uh, who's our director of Parks and Rec, and he can address all that. But I have a question for you, though. I, well, I can address the soccer oh, you fields. The, okay, so hold on. My question to you is with your daughter as, a, as an athlete, yes. does she prefer uh, natural grass versus artificial turf? Um, I would say natural grass. She has not experienced artificial turf. Okay, thank you, and I'll turn it over. We do have a, we do have a contractor under contract to, to, and fields are closed down, and they'll be closed down for a while now. You're right, we had record numbers, over 700 kids yep. that uh, that played soccer this last season. And uh, there are a lot of worn out grass and it will be it will be sodded um, or resodded. A lot of it will be cut out and resodded. Okay, I, and I think to your point about the artificial, maybe look at artificial turf because the increase we've, of- We've applied of, for grants for okay. artificial turf. We, we, are, we do not have conclusions on on whether to go with it or not. We know it will give us more longevity yep. on play and more number of days of play and all that, um, but we don't know the cost and we don't know the, the cost to install, how often it needs to be replaced and what the annual maintenance cost is. Okay. So once we know all that and we can compare it to what we're doing now, we'll, we'll make a decision. Okay, thanks. Okay. All right, now, regarding your concern about the, uh, what's happening in Madison Green, this is in a very, very early stage, and you will, there will be a very involved process where they will be coming to you, the citizens who live in Madison Green, to really explain what they're looking to do. Um, so yeah, this is not gonna just happen, and you, you, know, you don't all get a chance to, to get updated, and, and you know, then you can, you know, once you've got updated on what's really gonna be going on, and make a determination of what your thoughts are then. Okay, so. But Mayor, Mayor, if I could ahead. add a couple yeah, things, ahead. give them some ahead, assurance. Yes. It is a very long process um, for them to, to get to the conclusion of what they're asking to change. And it is their ask to change, it's, and they have the right to, to, to do right. that. 
Um, the, fir the first step in that is asking to change our code to allow a hotel on that property. Um, so it's not the site plan, it's not the, the hotel or anything like that, it's to change the code to make it permissive, because it's not permissive right now. Uh, in order to do that, they are within Madison Green, it is a, a planned unit development. They are, will be required to send registered mail to every resident in Madison Green for the first reading of the code change. So I suspect the code change will get in front of the council and everybody in Madison Green will be noticed. Okay, thank you, appreciate okay. it. Thank you. Thank you all right, that concludes all of the comment cards that I had uh, provided to me for items not on the agenda and on the consent agenda. Uh, I have no further cards. If anyone else would like to comment though, I would give them that opportunity now. Seeing none, I'm gonna close public comment to non-agenda items and to consent agenda items. Diane, could you give us a consent agenda? Yes, Mayor, thank, thank you. you. Number one, approval of the minutes of the council regular meeting of April 18th, 2024. Two, approval to purchase fireworks and pyrotechnician services from Sam Valley International Fireworks Manufacturing Company Incorporated for the annual display at the July 4th celebration being held at Royal Palm Beach Commons Park in the amount of $50,000 with purchase being in accordance with purchasing ordinance number 630 section 10-98D. Three, approval and authorization for the village manager to execute the second addendum to ice cream vendor services agreement between the village and Cool Runnings LLC to provide for the first one year renewal term beginning July 1st, 2024 and ending June 30th, 2025. Four, approval and authorization in accordance with established policy to make a budget amendment for fund 001 in the fiscal year 2023-2024 budget. Said amendment to transfer a total of $44,000 from Public Works personnel related costs in Fund 001 to Public Works R&M maintenance contracts in Fund 001. Five, approval and authorization for the village manager to execute an addendum to the contract with Epicurean Park LLC during doing business as Next Era Services to add additional grounds maintenance services for Crestwood Boulevard and the Village Hall Complex in the amount of $44,000 for the remainder of fiscal year 2024, June through September 2024. Six, requesting ratification of the emergency purchase for the repair of stormwater pipe on Sycamore Drive in the amount of $126,460 issued to Shenandoah General Construction. Funding source is from the Stormwater Operating Fund. Okay. Are there any questions or comments from members on council on the consent agenda? If none, I look for a motion. Motion to approve the consent agenda. Second. We have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? <laughs> we have no opposed. I let the record show the consent agenda was approved 5-0. We're going now to our regular agenda, item one. It's a presentation <clears throat> of our Palm Beach County Sheriff's District 9 annual report by Captain uh, Nayox. You're on, sir. Can't believe we're doing this again. Time just flies. <laughs> it does. Can you believe that? By and large, this will be my 11th year, either with Captain. Get Miles out of here, really? Own. Yeah. I wow. Got... You don't have to say it. Thank you. I appreciate that. <laughs> Want to know? Uh, listen, before I get started, I, I'd like to uh, thank you very much for taking your time to hear my annual report. It's always a, a a very good time when I can present the great things that the sheriff's office is doing for the village. Um, I'd also like to introduce two people I have here with me. The first one is our criminal intelligence analyst, Harry Hook. He does a lot of the things that he doesn't get credit for and that you don't see because they really don't show up in, in annual reports. Um, when criminals are arrested or financial crimes happens, he looks at things, he puts things together, and quite often he realizes what people are doing that they don't want you to know. Um, for instance, just recently we, we had an an investigation involving someone whose income way, way, way exceeded the justification they could have had from you know, the employment by which they, they were doing. Um, the homes they had, the cars they had, those types of things. Um, Analyst Hook found that out, found out that there's you know, some illegal things going on there, got federal agencies involved, had a big you know, meeting. He does that type of stuff. Um, he, he does a lot of the things, like I said, that you really don't see. And then joining me this year for the first time is Detective Sergeant Eric Keith. He's a new addition to District 9 and a very welcomed addition. Um, Sergeant Keith and I were partners together in homicide before either of us were promoted. 
Um, he's got a vast experience in the sheriff's office. He spent times in special investigations, crimes against children, internal affairs, um, and like I said, homicide. Uh, for you, Vice Mayor, he's also a uh, Army veteran. He's a captain. So he very you know, prim and proper when it comes to everything. Um, before I get into the, what I like to refer to as the meat and potatoes of this, there, there's a couple things I'd like to touch on. Since I first started here, I watched the dramatic change in the geography and the makeup of the village. It, it's grown. The traffic's grown. People have grown. Well, not people. Our developments have grown. We've added a lot of things that we didn't have before. Um, through that, we've still managed to do a very good job, and I, I'd like to give credit to the men and women out there where the rubber beats the road. Um, when I'm home at night and I'm getting these phone calls, they're dealing with it. When we're all in bed at night, they're in your neighborhoods going after the bad people. They're getting in between domestics. They're, they're doing the traffic stops. And this job has got more, a lot more dangerous now than it was when I first started. So I, I'd like to give them credit for that. Once I get into this, you'll see that things in Royal Palm really are very good. And most of the crimes we have, while important to the victims, are mostly property crimes. Um, the only thing that I've really seen a change and increase in, and these guys can go ahead and verify the veracity of that, is scams against the elderly. No matter what it is we do to put it out there, there's always people that are willing to take advantage of the elderly, and they do it all the time. And some of the amounts we see that these people are, are, are victimized of would, would really would make you shake your head. I mean, sometimes twenty, thirty, forty thousand dollars $40,000. And no one can really afford that, but least of all the people that are victimized. And, and that's what we're really starting to see a lot of, and that's what we're really trying to work on. Um, but those things are, are some of the things that we're starting to see more of a trend on besides the vehicle burglars and the other things. So without further ado. All right, community events. Uh, at District 9, we're very engaged in the community. I, I believe in the importance of community involvement. I go to a lot of things myself. Um, we just have some brief pictures up here of some of the things that we've attended. Uh, we have a lot of businesses and a lot of companies and a lot of people from the village stop in the front desk. They drop off baskets of cases of, of cookies or, or soda or, you know, whatever it might be. Um, we're very active in our schools. We participate in the bike helmet program. We do shop with a cop. We're involved in the business partnership program, um, conversation with the deputy. And uh, whenever requested, and I really try to push this out there, I really try to push our deputies to attend homeowners meetings. They show up with the stats for what's going on in that community with that development, and they educate the people as to what's going on in their neighborhood, because a lot of times people don't know. All they know is what they read on social media, and then they found out, wow, really, that's what it was about. It wasn't the Hindenburg crash in my neighborhood. It was a missing person that brought the helicopter in here, and that's what it was about. So I, I think that's very important, and you know, we strive to continue with our community engagement. COP, um, the numbers are up there on the slide. They provided 704 volunteer hours. We have 10 active members at this time. They drove 3,364 miles, uh, patrolled our parks 207 times, conducted 312 business checks, and their value, uh, if counted today in dollars, would be $22,387.20. Support statistics. District 9 is one of four designated areas in the county that provides fingerprinting, and we get a lot of people in there for fingerprinting services. In 2023, District 9 processed 1,760 requests for fingerprinting services. Additionally, the mounted unit provided 31 hours of horsepower patrol in the village and attended three events in the community. Bicycle equipped deputies provided 141 hours of patrol time. Marine certified deputies provided 32.5 hours of Marine patrol and our deputies processed over 120 pounds of unwanted prescriptions dropped off at the district. All right, calls for service. And I'm gonna elaborate on this a little bit. Uh, Calls for service are the number of calls we receive from the community. And what I'd like to, to stress to the council, to the mayor, is I'm very big on proactivity. So in other words, if our calls for service from the community, calls where in the community is requesting us to respond to something, an accident, a disturbance, a suspicious person or something, you would expect to see that our proactivity might go down a little because we're busy. We're taking care of calls for service. Um, I always try to push that if calls for service are down, our proactivity should be up. In other words, if you're not helping the public that much, if you're not going to domestics, work in accidents, whatever the case might be, then you should be busier finding suspicious people, doing traffic stops or whatever. This year, as the numbers will reflect, our calls for service went up, but so did our proactivity. So for example, um, our computer-aided dispatch system known as CADS captured a total of 121,380 incidents last year. Of those 99,721 were proactive calls, 
such as business or residence check, traffic stops, et cetera. The remaining 21,659 were law enforcement calls for service. So if you compare 2023 to 2022, there were 2,198 more calls for service from the community than there were in 2022, or calls for service increased by 11%. Now, when I get to some of the traffic stats, you'll see what I mean by proactivity. That also spiked up as well. All right, the UCR statistical comparison. As you know from years past, the Uniform Crime Report, or UCR, measures the crime rate per 100,000 individuals. It does so by recording crime in seven major crime categories. Those numbers are then compared to the previous, year numbers, <coughs> previous year's numbers to determine an increase or decrease in the crime rate. The seven major categories used are murder. There was one domestic-related homicide in the village in 2023. There were none in 2022. UCR did not capture a percentage rate for this category. However, for the council and the public listening, there was an arrest immediately made in that. Like I said during my statement, it was domestic related. Um, it was not some random stranger on some random stranger. Forcible rape, which in Florida is called sexual battery. There were 10 sexual battery cases investigated in District 9 in 2023 and 18 in 2022 for a decrease of 44%. Robbery, there were six in 2022 and nine in 2023, an increase of 50%. Aggravated assault, there were 58 in 2022 and 72 in 2023 for an increase of 24%. Noteworthy of those are 40 were domestic or acquaintance related, five of the victims of aggravated assault were law enforcement officers, nine were the result of road rage, and some cases had multiple victims. So in other words, if there's four people in a car and a road rage incident occurs and someone pulls out a knife and points a gun, Everyone in that vehicle is considered a victim, so. Burglary, there were 19 in 2022 and 60 in 2023, an increase of 571%. I'll explain that in depth shortly. Larceny, including auto burglary, there were 458 in 2022 and 423 in 2023, a decrease of 7%. Motor vehicle theft, there were 26 in 2022 and 21 in 2023, a decrease of 19%. The changes detailed above caused the total crime index to rise from 585 in 2022 to 596 in 2023. This resulted in a crime rate increase of 1%. In a moment, I'll elaborate on some of the crimes so you have a better idea about them, but just for the public that might be watching out, I'd like to throw up this stat. It's a UCR statistical, excuse me, statistical comparison from 2013 to 2023. Where and you'll see we started with a high of 1,103 and we're currently at 596, which is still way below where we were many years ago. So in other words, we're doing very well. We're growing, but we're, we're to use a military term, we're holding the line. Robbery incidents. Of the previously mentioned nine robberies that occurred in the village, five people were arrested in four of those cases. Five were acquaintance or narcotics related. In two of the cases, the victims refused to prosecute one case involved a business, and one was an attempted carjacking. Larceny incidents. There were 458 reported larcenies in 2022 and 423 in 2023. Of the 423 larcenies, 183 were shoplifting cases. That number rose from 181 in 2022 for an increase of 1%. Out of the shoplifting incidents, 37 occurred at Target, 38 at Walmart, 27 at Lowe's, two at Costco and five at BJ's. These shoplifting cases accounted for 59% of all the shoplifting cases in the village. Larceny incidents also include vehicle burglaries and I'll cover those in a separate slide in a second. Okay, this is the one I wanted to go over with you guys a little bit in depth and it's for the public out there so they understand. Burglaries, residential burglaries. In 2022, there were 11 and in 2023, there were 12. <coughs> this resulted in 9% increase in that category. Of those 12, Six were domestic or acquaintance related. One was suspicious in nature. Two were narcotics related. And in two cases, open areas were entered and in one, a door was pried open. However, entry was never made into the residence. That being said, from 2019 to 2023, residential burglaries decreased by 48% in the village of Royal Palm Beach. Now for the cause of the spike in our burglaries. The dramatic percentage increase in burglaries within the village was caused by burglaries or attempted burglaries to storage units, all of which had their locks cut. 32 or 68% of the 47 business burglaries were to storage units. The remaining 15 burglaries were to traditional storefront type businesses. Now we had two different incidents in two different storage facilities 
where people came and cut locks. Some entry wasn't even made, some entry was made, nothing was taken, some we couldn't prove either way. However, if you can prove that a person attempted to enter, it's considered a burglary whether or not forceful entry was made or not. Therefore, it counts as a stat. Similarly, if someone goes to pull on your car door handle to try and make entry in your car, whether they make entry or not, the law doesn't make a distinction between the burglary in UCR and an attempted burglary. It's counted as a burglary. Anyway, for those, multiple business burglary arrests were made, 10 for storage unit burglaries and 10 for storefront type. Now, I could tell you in one of the business, excuse me, in one of the, the, the storage unit burglaries, we caught the suspect in the act. And we were able to prove a lot of the cases by virtue of the fact he was in possession of stolen property. He wasn't confessing, he, he invoked his right to counsel right away, so the other cases we were unable to prove, which sometimes, sadly enough, is the case. And video there just wasn't enough to support our investigation. Vehicle burglary and auto theft. There were 96 vehicle burglaries in 2022 and 99 in 2023, an increase of 3%. <laughs> Arrests were made in 32 of those cases. Vehicle burglaries accounted for 99 of the 458 reported larcenies. Of those 99 vehicle burglaries, 78 or 77% were to vehicles that were left unlocked. Six firearms were taken in burglaries to those unlocked vehicles. Additionally, there were 26 auto thefts in 2022 and 21 in 2023, a decrease of 19%. Of those 21 thefts, 16 or 76 involved keys that were left in the vehicle. Of the remaining th auto thefts, one, excuse me, some were acquaintance related or stem from reports filed by dealerships or car rental agencies. Traffic. The top three traffic crash locations in the village were determined to be State Road 80 and US 441, which had 105 crashes or 10 more in 2023 than 2022 for an increase of 10.5%. State Road 80 and Crestwood Boulevard, which had 74 crashes or 10 more crashes in 2023 than 2022 for an increase of 15.6%. And Okeechobee Boulevard and State Road 7, which had 55 or six more crashes in 2023 than 2022 for an increase of 12.2%. <laughs> Overall, in the village of Royal Palm Beach, we had 1,430 crashes in 2023, 120 more than 2022, or 2.8% 2 increase. Deputies issued 4,921 traffic citations, which was up 24% from 2022, and 11,897 warnings, which was a 15% increase from 2022. Deputies also made 56 DUI arrests, which was five more than were made in 2022. Our street crimes unit, or as I like to put there, a jack of all trades. The unit consists of four deputies and one sergeant. They're utilized for crime suppression, problem solving, and support for road patrol. In 2023, they made 234 arrests, resulting in 126 felony and 84 misdemeanor charges. They also made 58 warrant arrests. They conducted 1,066 traffic stops, issued 279 citations, 694 warnings, and completed 185 field interview reports. Additionally, they authored and executed eight search warrants and assisted with an additional six other search warrants. Our detectives, um, together they were assigned 162 cases total. They made 30 arrests and had a case clearance rate of 39.51%, which is better than average. Our LPR cameras are still a gift to the village, which I once again want to thank the mayor, the vice mayor, the council, and the village manager for. Um, we're doing great things with them, and I continue to expect we will. Um, they have detected 102 vehicles that were stolen or used in other crimes, both in and outside the village. And I don't think that this includes um, silver alerts or any other alerts that they might have been used for. We get notifications from them quite often, um, including from other villages and other districts and cities as well. And quality survey. As a means by which to gauge the public's satisfaction with the services rendered by District 9 deputies, surveys were mailed to 480 people who requested our assistance. Of those, only 63 responded. Of those, 95% rated us as excellent and 5% rated us as good. And then goals, crime reduction and traffic safety and the safety of our citizens remains of paramount importance to me, to me, the Sheriff Rick Bradshaw and the members of District 9. Um, that's evidenced by the increase in traffic citations and traffic statistics. And uh, we're on target this year to exceed, uh, excuse me, last year's numbers. Yes, that's correct. And I'd like to stress to the council a lot of people think the sheriff's office of the village makes money off of that. We don't, okay? This is a means by which we try to educate the public as to what's going on. And as you all know, 
traffic complaints are the number one complaints that I receive in my office, if I'm not mistaken, probably the, the most complaints that you receive from your constituents as well. Uh, Dean, as that ends my presentation, I'll be more than happy to answer any questions that anybody might have. All right, thank you, Captain Eric. Who, any questions, members of council? I have a question. Yes, go ahead. Go ahead, you go first. Then, then you go. Nothing too, nothing too complicated <laughs> or too hard. Um, the Citizens Ob Observe Patrol, right, the cops, do you have extra capacity for other volunteers? I know volunteers aren't free, so do you have capacity for more? We would love to have more. We would absolutely love to have more. We, we've done a big campaign drive as a means by which to try to enhance our numbers. If you might have seen, there was a sign outside of, uh, outside of Target for a little while, just a little west of Target, Oak Shores Boulevard. Um, I did a newsletter asking for more. We'd absolutely love to have more. Awesome. We've been at the green market too, trying to recruit. With, yeah, well, I'd love to expand those numbers, absolutely. Great. And then my other question for residents is, where are the exact locations for the, the unwanted prescription drop-off? In the front lobby of District 9. There's a big green drop box in there. As soon as you walk into the door, it's on your left side. Okay, great. I, I would just remind people, and, and we have big signs on it, but I can never say it enough, we will not accept powders. I've had to evacuate the lobby when people have done that, and we do not accept syringes in there either. Very good. Thank you. Later. Thank you for your report overall. Fantastic. I appreciate it. Thank you very much, and thank you very much to everybody through District 9 as well. So it, it is a lot, and we don't think we need you or that you're around until we actually do need you. So I'd like to say thank you very much. As a resident of La Mancha, there were three of your um, deputies that I saw out there today. So I appreciate that, especially with the speeding issue out there. So thank you. Um, the questions that I had, first of all, your fingerprinting, do you charge for that? No, it's free service. Okay, so anybody can come in and, and request that. Okay. Yes. The other thing is, um, under the burglaries, what constitutes as a specialty business? You had three of them. I'm glad I have Mr. Hook here <laughs> for that. <laughs> well, a lot of specialty businesses will be your vape shops, your if you got any medical marijuana types, but those okay. that specialize in one specific area, not like a 7-Eleven, not like your AT&T store, they're just pretty much ones that specify in one area. So it, one area meaning of an industry? Yes. Okay, so they are the vape stores or the CBD stores or the... Or cell phone stores. Yes. Oh, but or cell phone. Okay, so that's what falls under specialty. Do you know what those three were? Are they, what was one AT&T, was one a vape one store, was a and was... Store. One was a cell phone store, and there okay. was one vape shop that I remember, yes. Okay, all right, thanks. And then my last question was, um, with the targeted crash locations, because of how busy specifically those intersections are, do you anticipate that they are red light running, or are they pedestrians that are trying to cross too quickly and get hit? No, they're not that. They're what we typically see. A lot of it I probably attribute to distracted driving, although I can't prove it because people will never sure. tell you that they were on their phone when they were rendered right. somewhere, we're not paying attention, rolled through the light. A lot of them are angle crashes. It's pretty much what we've been seeing in the years past. Okay. It's just basically an attentiveness. Okay. And I do understand with the um, State Road 7 and 441. Um, corner or, or that intersection, it is, and I know this is a state road, but it is very difficult to see underneath the overpass of Southern Boulevard going over. Um, and I've seen people who go to make a left-hand turn if they're heading west and then turn to head south, and they actually go in the northbound lane. So is there anything, is that a, a county concern, or is that something that, pe that the sheriff's office can do? Uh, we've paid attention to that and we've put people there, but as far as the design of that roadway, I'd, I'd have to defer to a traffic engineer. Okay, thank you very much. You're very well. Is that the intersection where they have the thing in the middle, island in the middle of the yeah. and people still can't navigate that? It's, well, it's difficult because it's right underneath the overpass and it's dark. So what happens is, is you're making a turn you it, and you don't see that it's the median in the middle. It's only a little, di it's a rhombus in the middle. We've run operations at these intersections but when people see police cars there, and you know, they behave. They don't do what they wouldn't do if they didn't see the police car there. You know, they put down their phone and they make sure they have their seatbelt on, you know. At one point, and I don't mean to beleaguer my, my presentation, the traffic division was out checking for safety belts underneath that very same overpass. And, you know, they couldn't see them until you're right up on them. It was actually a, a very good place for them to, to locate. And they caught a ton of people, but had they seen them first, they would just click the belt. And it's the same thing that we see right. when we do our ops. Oh, no, they're sneaky on that side, yeah. because if you don't come to a complete stop on that corner there as yeah. well. Yeah. That is where we have crashes. Thank you. You're very welcome. Sure. So I can, I can testify to the fact that you do watch that intersection. 
there is such a thing as a rolling stop. I, I know that because I was pulled over for a rolling stop there. In my defense, kind of what we're saying about that intersection, it is problematic, but it is one that is fairly high on the list of the TPA taking a look right. at our yeah. problem intersections. It, yeah. it, it really is. Uh, it's like a lot of things. It takes time and money uh, to, to fix it if, if there is a fix at all for something that is, is that unfortunate in its, in its basic design. Uh, dangerous by design is a phrase that's often used, and that fits that, that intersection, unfortunately, but stay after it. There was a time when uh, there was quite a bit of interest in neighborhood watch. Has, has that died off completely, or does that still exist? It's funny you should say that, because that's included in my strategic plan, and I've been trying to get additional ones up off the ground, so I actually penned a newsletter article that's going to that'll appear in this month's newsletter in the village that comes out on June 1st as a means by which to try and make that a little bit bigger than what it is now. I, I think that's an excellent, you do a lot of great things to engage mm -hmm. uh, with, with the residents and uh, to establish a really effective working relationship and trust, which is clearly one of the most important things. And for a while there, there was a lot of neighborhood watch activity going on. Yep. and. And I think that uh, that'd be a good thing to, to re-energize, yes. I really do. And I thank you very much for the great job that District 9 does. You've thank you, Vice Mayor. Great leadership and uh, great folks doing a, a tough job. Thank, thank you, you for that. Thank you. Any other questions? I, I do have a question. Uh, during this last uh, fiscal year, have any of the assigned officers who work uh, in, for Royal, Royal Palm Beach been injured in, in, uh, in line of duty? We've had quite a few, yes. Um, most recently, I attended an award ceremony where one of our female officers and went back up. A citizen called in a, a domestic in progress in the parking lot right over by the Marathon Gas Station. Right. Yes, and um, uh, one of our female deputies showed up and she tried to de-escalate it until um, assistance arrived, and assistance did in fact arrive. And uh, while trying to calm the, the individual down, he just wouldn't have it. So it, it became physical when they tried to take that gentleman into custody. Um, so much to the point that two people that were there that were citizens observed it and they stopped to help get this guy in custody. Um, mm. One of the deputies was injured, he required surgery. Um, I felt that the two citizens that assisted uh, went above and beyond in, in aiding him and I put them in for a sheriff's office award and they were actually nominated, and, excuse me, not nominated, they were recognized by Sheriff Bradshaw and they were called to our annual and they received awards. And uh, part of my, my um, presentation uh, includes a slide where there's the male deputy, the female deputy, and the two individuals that received the award standing together in a picture. Okay. Well, um, so no further questions. Any members? Uh, I just want to say that I think the the uh, the job that uh, you and your team have been doing for the Village of Royal Palm Beach is outstanding. I get a lot of positive feedback, believe it or not, for our citizens on the, your just your presence and and you know, and as you know, uh, be, the work that you do for us. Um, is our top priority that we want all of our citizens in the village to feel safe in their homes and that, that their kids are safe, and that's so important um, and, and is a, a, a key of why I think Royal Palm Beach is, is uh, where we are. Um, so thanks for your report. If there are no further, and, and if I may say one thing, and we'll close this down. I, I do explain to my staff, and I do realize the support that I get from the mayor and the council, and, and even the village manager. I, I have frequent contact with the village manager. He's very supportive. Your staff here has been, whether it's a parks issue or public works issue or, or whatever it might be. I, I thoroughly have to say I, I really do enjoy my position here, and I, I certainly do enjoy the, the support we receive from the council and the mayor, excuse me, the council and, and the vice mayor. And uh, I have explained that, and everybody thoroughly understands that, because I've seen when it doesn't go that way, and I understand how grateful we are. So thank you. Thank you. Right, thank you. Okay. Okay. Regular agenda item R2 is a public hearing to consider application number 23-187, an application by Bar Education, Inc., and approval of ordinance number 1045 on a second reading. The applicant is seeking zoning map uh, amendment to change the zoning designation of one parcel uh, totaling approximately 0.235 acres from the village's public ownership zoning district to the village's industrial general zoning district for a property located on 6846 Seminole Palms Drive. 
this is a quasi-judicial process, so we'll have to have people sworn in. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. As you say, this is quasi-judicial. I'll swear in the applicant and staff at the same time. Bradford, thank you. Do you, do you both swear from to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes. Thank you. And just for the council's uh, pleasure, can you state your name for the record? Uh, Heather Jo Allen. My office is located at 55 Southeast 2nd Avenue in Delray Beach. Thank you. And I'll turn back to the council for any ex parte disclosures on this item. Village staff. Great. Thank you, Mayor. Good evening, everyone. Um, this application is simply assigning a zoning district um, designation consistent with the future land use designation of the parent property. Um, the applicant is requesting the rezoning of a 0.235 acre parcel from the village's public ownership zoning district to the industrial general zoning district. The applicant has indicated in their justification statement that the ultimate goal is to develop the property for the purpose of providing additional parking lot for the existing Primrose School. <clears throat> the local planning agency considered this application on March 26, 2024 and recommended approval by a vote of five to zero. Village Council considered this application on first reading on April 18th and voted to approve with a vote of five to zero. And I'll turn the floor back over to you, Mayor. Thank you. Thanks, Brad. Perfect. Okay, have we had any prior uh, public comments on no, this agenda item? No. Great, anyone have their hands raised? No, Mayor. Okay, I have not received any public comment cards on this agenda item, so I'm closing public comment to agenda item R2. Questions or comments from council? This is second reading, if there are none, I look for a motion. Motion to approve regular agenda item R2. Second. We have a motion and a second. All in favor? And Mr. Uh, Mayor, I'm sorry, before you call for the vote, just to make read? sure, does the applicant have anything else she'd like to add before? Uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Thank you, I didn't Mr. Give Mayor. You, is there? Agenda and a lot of um, fun <laughs> stuff um, before you tonight. So I just want to reiterate that this is part of my client's efforts to effectuate the agreement um, between the village and my client, which allowed them to acquire this property for the purpose of a, um, uh, constructing additional parking to support their academic institution use. And I'm happy to answer any questions should you have any. Well, thank you. They didn't have any questions, so. <laughs> 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 but thank you. <laughs> okay, thanks. Thank you, Maddie. Um, okay, we have a motion to second, right? Mm -hmm. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? We have no opposed. Diane, let the record show agenda item more. Two with approved, five zero, and good luck. Thank good you. Luck. Thank you. Okay, agenda item R3 is a public hearing to consider application 24-011, an application by Mario Lopez Pisani. On behalf of the Village of Royal Palm Beach, resolution number 24-05, confirming the council's action. The applicant is seeking a site plan modification to relocate the proposed art and public places from its previously approved location to a new designated on-site location for a property located at 1050 Rome Palm Beach Boulevard. Isn't this that address? Us. <laughs> That's us. Mm -hmm. um, this is a quasi-judicial process, so people have to be sworn in. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. And uh, is the applicant present on the computer? Is the artist on the on the computer? Okay. Um, Mr. Pisani, I'll swear you in. Uh, Ms. Nybeck, can you hear me? I can hear you. Very good, I need to swear you in. This is a quasi-judicial proceeding. Can you raise your right hand for me? And Mr. Pisani, you as well? Do you both swear from tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I swear. I do. Thank you, Ms. Nybeck. And I'll turn back to the council for any ex parte disclosures on this item. Okay. Applicant and staff. You are, sir. Uh, council members and mayor. The application before you is uh, 24 dash or slash 011, um, site plan modification. The applicant is requesting a site plan modification to relocate the proposed art and public places from its previously approved location to a new designated on-site location for a property located at 1050 Royal Palm Beach Boulevard, which is here. Uh, the current slide illustrates the approved public art, public places location approved for application 2054 uh, for the new village hall complex. And if you can see that little star within the uh, reflection pool, that was the original uh, public art uh, location. This adjustment is proposed to address the challenges associated with installing art in a water feature to avoid additional unforeseen expenses impacting the art and public places budget and to optimize the artwork's placement for its unique characteristics. The proposed relocation aims to foster public engagement, enhance the visual surroundings, 
and establish a focal point for art in public places with the newly constructed Village Hall building. The proposed relocation also does not require modifications to the approved landscape plan. And I'll show you the following will be slides of um, what I'm referring to. This slide here is what was originally approved. And this slide here shows the proposed art and public places, uh, basically relocation. And that's Mario, just real quick. So, and we are in the building that is directly opposite side of that. So yes. we'll be looking out at it. Yes, so basically the relocation is directly north of the reflection pool. I'll tell you what, <laughs> does that mean it'll be right out front here? Right, right in front of the, the Cypress, the new Cypress Hall. So it's on the other side of the pool. Right. No, it's on this side of the road. And if you go out there down, look, there's a circle, it's right here. Where's the pool? So there's a 13 or 15 foot by eight foot hole in the back. It's gonna go where that grass is. I have to take a look, but okay. Yeah, it's there's it's there's basically a circle and there's sod there now. It's between we, two trees. Okay, we won't be able to see it from here. Okay, you can see some of it from here. Okay, all right, thank you. And yeah, that concludes my presentation. I'm glad to answer any questions. If not, <laughs> return the floor back to you. Would the applicant like to make any comments? We are the applicants. Uh, I oh have really? the applicant. <laughs> it's going to be beautiful. It's a great location. Okay, confused me. I'm like, she talked to herself. <laughs> she'll for the next one. Okay. It's two. Two. Stand of them. by. All yes, right. She'll be. Okay. Um, Diane, any uh, public comment cards on agenda item R three? No, Mayor. Any hands raised? Mayor. Okay. I've not received any public comment cards on this agenda item, so I'm closing public comments this evening on agenda item R three. Uh, comments from members on council? If there are none, I'll take a motion. Oh, I'll make a motion to approve regular agenda R3. Second. Any motion and a second, all in favor? Aye. Any opposed? <clears throat> we have no opposed. All right, Diane, let the record show that agenda item R3 was approved 5-0. Agenda item R4 is a public hearing to consider application number 24-016, an application by Mario Lopez uh, Pisani, on behalf of the village of Palm Beach, the applicant is requesting architectural and aesthetic review approval for the commission purchase and installation of 11 foot tall sculptural work titled Rooted by artist Beth Nabick and to fulfill the art and public places requirement for the new village hall for a property located as 1050 Royal Palm Beach Boulevard. Do they have to be sworn in again? No, Mr. Mayor, they've, they've been sworn, so they'll remain sworn, uh, both Mr. Pisani and Ms. Nybeck, who's on the computer. I'll just ask you for ex parte disclosures on this item. So yes, I spoke with the applicant, I mean, with the artist. Yes, yeah. Staff. Thank you. Go ahead. Go yep. ahead. So the applicant, which is myself on behalf of the village, um, is requested, we're requesting architectural aesthetic approval as you mentioned, for an installation of uh, an 11 foot high, 11 and a half wide, and 11 and a half deep aluminum sculpture titled Rooted by Kansas City based artist Beth Nybeck to fulfill the art of public places requirement for this new village hall. As part of phase one, artist Nybeck conducted one on one meetings with all council members to discuss ideas and commissioning. Um, and today we have her here tonight, remotely, online, uh, to give us a presentation on the project. Um, uh, can you see the presentation there on your screens or? Yes, uh, and yes. If Beth, if you can hear me, uh, good evening as well. And you can go ahead and uh, begin your presentation. Great, thank you, Mario. And good evening, uh, council members and mayor. It is an honor and a privilege to be uh, with you tonight. Um, I spoke with all of you uh, back in December, and so uh, it's great to touch base again, and I'm excited to share this concept with you and to see um, our conversation in fruition. It was, I uh, just wanna thank you for the opportunity to dream about this project. It's one of my favorite parts of my job to speak with community and to gather ideas and come up with something that's a reflection of, uh, a reflection of your community. And so uh, I really enjoyed all of our conversations that we had and throughout all the conversations, it was interesting to see some common themes and commonalities, things that were uh, continue to come up in all of our conversations. <laughs> and of those, all of uh, 
all of our thoughts and our comments and our conversation, there were three common themes that continue to come up. Um, one of them was part, your parks and uh, your natural preservation that you are striving to prioritize in your community. Uh, the second one was family and uh, being a, a very family friendly oriented community. And the third was this sense of home. Um, Harkening back to uh, your motto, your city, or your village motto of a place we call home. And so taking those three common themes, I created uh, a concept that was a reflection of those things. And it is, um, our work is entitled Rooted, and it, in its very simple form, it is these two leaf-like forms that intersect in the middle and have showcased what I call is like a waterway. It's this, um, you know, if you take a microscopic view of a leaf, you see all of the pathways that water travels through the leaf. And water continues to, for me to be a sign and symbol of life and vitality. And you can see this kind of uh, form um, repeated either in nature, and this is just like a view of a river from an uh, aerial view of a river, um, but it's also we can kind of see these sort of um, these sort of imagery within the, our neuro system, within our veins and our blood and in our own bodies. And so it's this idea, this um, symbol of life um, in abundance. And so this is kind of a skeletal view, uh, two views of what this would look like. And as you guys know, community engagement is a huge part of the work that I do. Uh, oftentimes I will engage with a community and integrate an element of storytelling within my work. And this is an idea for me to engage with the community, uh, to get to know them better and have the work be a reflection of your community and not just my voice, but the voices of many, many people. And so the, the theme or the story that we are telling within this artwork is home. And it's this idea, I thought it was really interesting of everyone that I spoke with, um, there seems to be this recurring theme of a lot of people have are transplants from somewhere else. So this is this has become your home, but you were not born and raised here. And so this idea of when does a place become home to you? When do you go from being a stranger to being known by your neighbors or being known in your community? And that is something that happens to each of us throughout our lifetime. Um, and it's it's both like a universal feeling, but it's also deeply personal to when uh, when we become, when, when somewhere feels like home to you. And so that is my, this is the story that I'm trying to capture within what I'm calling the waterways of each leaf structure. And so you can see on your right hand side, just kind of um, some ideas of like, these are my words of, um, you know, barbecue with college t-ball team, or we have three generations living under one roof. Uh, our kids have a school musical that are really great. So these are just kind of like things that I've come up with in my own mind. But um, like, when does a when does a place feel like home to you? Um, whether that's hosting family, whether that's getting to know neighbors, whether that's volunteering or um, familial memories that you have that you bring back into your world. Um, but I want to ask those questions of your community, and their words will then be included within the sculpture. So within each of these like waterways, uh, within this sculpture, there's 50 spaces uh, for community members' reflections to be included within the work. As you can see, like some spaces are really small. These are like two word responses. Uh, some are, these are also, these are just my, um, just my examples here, but some are, some are parades, night walks, park festivals. These are things that are really important to our family um, in Kansas City. Uh, other spaces can, talk, can incorporate a much longer sentence um, or many words within that space. So get a good combination of people who have a lot to say and people who just have a word or two to say. So here's the material specs. It is made out of aluminum. It will be 11 feet tall and 11 and a half feet wide and deep. So the purpose of this artwork and uh, one of the fun questions I got to ask each one of you in our conversations was what do you hope this artwork does for your community? And uh, your responses were um, 
You want it to engage, you want it to inspire, and you want it to be a point of connection. Um, so this this sculpture will be located as you just, um, as Mario just did, described, it's a, a large pedestrian area. It's also uh, a lot of vehicular traffic that goes through there as well. Um, so it's a, a natural place for people to be able to, to gather, to walk around, and to read the words of your community members. And some things may be um, surprising. Some things may be um, really a point of connection for other people. And um, so this is a, a great thing for the community, but it's also a great thing for um, staff, um, everybody who works at the village to be a, a place to remember, a place to reflect. Um, I just got to like hear in to, you know, one of your normal city council meetings. And so I'm getting just like a little taste of things that you um, do support, um, hear about um, the fires that you have to put out. And so I know it's a hard job. But this is also a place, and I'm hopeful that this will be a sculpture that reminds you of the place that you guys have created, protected, um, helped to thrive within your community. So I'm hoping that these words will be a place for you as well to just um, be inspired after perhaps a long or frustrating um, day of work. Uh, this will be lit at night from below, so it will really allow light to kind of pass through the sculpture. Um, and I just think that this is just a really beautiful way to give light and hope to people's words. It's beautifully, it's beautiful and aesthetic, but it's also, to me, really, um, really powerful. And here's just a couple more renderings. <laughs> and this is installation. This is a looking um, down on the sculpture from above. There will be four lights installed into a concrete pad. Um, sculpture will be built in Kansas City and uh, transported to Royal Palm. A piece will be anchored into the concrete pad with anchor bolts. Um, let's see here. Exterior circle will be measuring at 13 inches in diameter. Um, I've proposed, it doesn't have to be this, but proposed the, sculpt, the sculpture um, footing to be just elevated six inches above grade. And that will give it just a little bit of a lift off of um, surface. Is that, a, is that okay to do that? We're okay with that? Yeah, we're, we're gonna be, we're gonna, well, we're gonna work that out. Okay. You don't have to do it. It's just a suggestion. So <laughs> we're going to work with you and we're going to make it right. <laughs> okay. So again, the goals for the location were engaging, pedestrian friendly, appealing from all angles, a place to gather and connect and very visible. And this is another view from above, but you guys have a good handle on where that is. All right, and with that, I'm um, happy to answer any questions anybody has or comments. All right. Um, oh. Jen, you had a question? Yeah, um, <clears throat> you know, just a couple of comments, Beth. Um, it is, I, I just want to say it's gorgeous, and I want to thank you for really taking the time to strategize and reflect um, the community, our comments, um, and you, I can tell you can tell by um, the attention to detail how much time you really cared about reflecting our community. And I, I just want to say thank you for that. Good. Uh, just real quick, Beth, it's Selena, and we've talked about this a little bit, but how are you collecting the words that you're going to um, uh, commission? Yeah, great, great question. So typically how I've done it in cities in the past is I will come um, during a, sometimes I'm in the schools and sometimes it's more of a, a project that's geared towards the youth, but uh, oftentimes it's, I try to get as broad spectrum and reflection of the community as I can. And so I will come, sometimes it's geared around a festival that the city's already having that's gonna have a large crowd. Other times I'll spend a couple of days in public spaces like a library um, and, you, and really work with the, 
the community to say, okay, where can I have intersections and um, conversations with people in the community? And so we kind of locate a couple of spaces within the community that would be great spots for me to set up a table and just talk to strangers all day long and gather, uh, gather words. Um, I try to make some, some pretty good efforts to get community that wouldn't make it to those public spaces. That's especially the elderly population. So getting into a nursing home, um, or a space like that, uh, to make sure I'm getting a good breadth and depth of your community reflected in there. I will be turning over my findings, my comments to everybody. And this is kind of, for me, not a, a dangerous, um, practice. I want you to be able to say, we don't want this included, um, but you don't get to pick what is included. Uh, you just get to say if something is like um, not reflective of what you want to have displayed. So I get to be the final say of what does get to be included and um, which which of the, you know, 100 or 200 saying get to be the, like the 50. But um, I will give it over to you guys to say, please don't include this. Um, if that's something that, if you read something that is um, something you don't want to include. So I do want to put that out there. Okay, so just for clarification then, so we will we'll be able to remove ones that we definitely don't want, but how do you choose, and you don't have to go into a lot of detail, but then how do you choose the 50 if you have 200? Oh, you know, it's, uh, it's hard. It's hard to choose uh, the 50. Uh, sometimes there's, uh, there'll be things that are repeated so if there is like a right. common theme on something, I, I make sure to include that. Um, and if there are different languages spoken within your community, I try to have as many people respond in their native language, hmm. which can just, you know, give an extra flair to the piece that is reflective of like, oh my gosh, look at, look at our part of our community if there's different languages reflected there. Sometimes that's really important for a project and other times people are like, no, we really need it all to be in English. Um, so you'll make sure to let me know as you're seeing my responses. But, you know, that's kind of like my artistic preference of what gets to be reflected. I'm somebody who is um, optimistic and hopeful and um, enjoy humor. And, uh, and so I take that into consideration as I'm reading about people. And this is like something that is, it's like a non-divisive theme and story to be telling about when the important things about when something feels like home to somebody. So I don't anticipate anything being included from a person's response that you're like, oh my gosh, we can't have that on there. So I don't foresee that being a problem whatsoever. Usually people who are like not into participating just like don't participate in this kind of process, this project, instead of giving me something nasty as a response, they just kind of say, you know what, this isn't for me. I'm not going to respond. So, um, so yeah, I'm excited. I'm excited to know your community and uh, get to know them better through their words and their, I don't know, this is like a heart, to me, kind of a heartfelt story to be engaging people with. So I think people, the, the times that I've done this in communities, people are really, really excited and feel honored to be included in a project. And so what I've found is that there's instant ownership over a sculpture. When it goes in, people want to come and see it they tell their friends about it and they already know a little bit of the history i know different communities want to avoid any sort of like backlash on artwork and oftentimes that's circumvented just because people know it's coming um that knowledge that this is the artwork and i've heard a little bit about it and it's, it's going to be coming here is enough for people to get really excited. It's when people don't know anything about it. They're like, oh, I don't know. What is this thing? And where did it come from? And how come no one asked me about it? Um, so that's, um, so oftentimes when I'm doing community engagement. This is also another kind of like, it's publicizing the project and educating your community about what's going to be here and what's going to be happening and gets them excited about it when it shows up. Thank you. And my, uh, do you have anything to add, Mario? Because I have a question for you when you're done. Yeah, so what we had, uh, we discussed um, was uh, getting her to a place where there's a lot of residents, right? right? So we discussed potentially doing, a, having her come by for the July 4th celebration at Commons Park, okay. having her set up a booth, and we'll get some sort of resident feedback that way. We'd have to 
still figure that out, but that's something we've discussed, we've touched on. Okay, thanks. And then my final question is for you or for staff. The four lights that are surrounding the sculpture, can they be um, varying color versus just white? So at least this way they can <coughs> alternate? Yeah, that, We're I just- work those details out with Beth. And, and like even on the foundation being up, yeah. um, and my hesitation earlier was we uh, we have to work it out with Beth to, so it's, it's just not concrete with this on top of it. I, you need a, a finished surface that looks piece, really good, so. and and so we'll be working those details out with her, and, and that'll be that'll be her decision on the on the lights. On the lighting. Okay. They'll be in the in they'll be bit set in the in the concrete, but the way that the light will spread on it and the, and the color will be her choice. Just wanted to say thank you so much, Beth. Uh, you put a lot of work into this, and it looks fabulous to me. Thank you. And um, you know, this is Jeff Amara, and I, I would say, Beth, uh, you've done a great job of distilling, I'm sure, um, a lot of input that you got from each of us, uh, and that gives me great confidence as well as seeing some of your other pieces, but I, but I love the idea of uh, the, uh, the personal touch uh, of, and the connectedness, um, which I think uh, really will make this piece that, that kind of attractive. I wanna hang out here, I wanna hear the stories um, and, and be part of what is a great community. So thank you for that, I'm looking mm -hmm. forward to it. Uh, Beth, thank you. Yeah, Beth, I just wanted to say that this has been a really interesting process uh, and to see where we are. <laughs> Because I remember when I first spoke with you, I had no notion, you, you know, what, what this was going to, to look like. But I think you've captured the essence of uh, what we believe we are here in, in rural Palm Beach. Uh, my question is really now, what's the timeline for this to get done by? Do we have one yet? So we have a sort of, we anticipated a four to six month timeline um, after approval, uh, basically, uh, commissioning once approved with installation anticipated between August and October 2024. Beth can expound on that a little bit more, um, but that's what we have sort of in the agenda. So that's what so we we're established. looking at by Thanksgiving, maybe having it. Up, lit, yeah, running. I think so. <laughs> All things go really well. Yeah. yeah exactly. <laughs> okay. And now, you, you, so you're going to be in town. Sounds like for the July 4th event. Is that the only time that she will have it be able to get access to, to the public? That was what we discussed, and that's what we were hoping for. Um, okay. So we can figure everything out and, and sort of maximize that to the extent yep. it's possible. Yeah. We'll talk, we'll yeah, talk. and it doesn't have to be that date either. If the, if anybody has some better suggestions that's, or better ideas, that, that's a good date. We probably have twenty thousand residents or folks at the at the event, so. Well, that's definitely when we would get the most number of residents in one place, without question, and the, where you could talk to the most number of residents at one time. Um, I think it would all, I mean, what she had mentioned was also visiting places. So we do have two nursing, three nursing homes in rural Palm Beach. So we can right, arrange yeah. that stuff, that, okay, those, yeah, those that visits great. ahead of time uh, for her visit and, it, and any other place that she great, thinks of. It would be like, great if she get a chance to talk to the folks at Young at Hearts. Mm -hmm. Well, they're not here during the summer. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. I, that's what I'm going for. The, yeah. yeah. We don't have it. We don't have. We don't have any. Our young at heart lunches stop during the, the summer. Yeah. Yeah. To the board. I don't know, but well, okay. I just a thought. If that's yeah. something to be worked out. Yes, we can arrange. All, we can arrange all that. Yeah. We can arrange all okay. that. We will arrange all that. All right. Anything else you'd like to add, Beth? I, I think everybody's here shaking their head. They really like this, and we, it feels good to us right now. And as I said. You know, this is Royal Palm Beach, so this is special for us, and thank you. Gosh, well, thank you so much. You guys are so kind, uh, really encouraging. I'm glad that this is um, a, a place of connection for you, and it's been really good to get to know all of you uh, as much as I have, and I can't wait to continue in the process, so thank you. I did want to add one final thing. Go ahead. Um, that uh, we're recommending the approval of the application with the condition that the artists provide us uh, with engineered wind loads um, for the uh, proposed piece for permitting purposes so that we can uh, begin work on the concrete anchor. And Beth, you agree to pad. that? Yeah, so Beth will be able to provide that. Um, and I, I also wanted to ask you, Beth, if you had sort of a, a, a timeline where you can provide that for us. 
Yes, I can. Uh, so as soon as this project gets approval, I can let my engineer know. And they said two to three weeks turnaround time, they can get the kelps back to you guys. Okay, perfect. Okay, thank you. Um, I didn't ask for public comment information. Were there any prior comments on this agenda item R4? No, Mayor. Ray, anyone have their hand raised? No, Mayor. Okay, I do not have any public comment cards submitted to me on this agenda item, so I'm closing the floor on agenda item R4. I think if there are no further questions or comments from members on council, I'll look for a motion. Motion to approve regular agenda item four. Second. We have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Any, any opposed? We have no opposed. So let, uh, Diane, let the record show that agenda item R4 was approved 5-0 and we move forward with our public art project here. Thank you again, everyone. Thanks, Beth. She signed off already? Okay. No, thank you. I'm still oh, here. Thank you so much. Okay. <laughs> I was going to say, did you want to stick around and hear the approval? <laughs> no, I did. I definitely okay. wanted to stick around for the okay. approval. Okay. We, we, you are approved. It's approved. Thank you. Okay. Great. All right. All right. Agenda item R5 is a public hearing to consider mm -hmm. ordinance number 1040 on first reading, amending village code section 22 3 to add a new definition for the for the term engineering permit. Section 22-4 to clarify the applicability of regulations and add a new section 22-5 engineering permits to provide regulations regarding the requirements and process for obtaining an engineering permit within a village and at, a, and at section 2-75.29 to add an appeal process for appeal of village engineer decisions regarding engineering permits. Graphic, please explain. Great, thank you, Mayor. I am going to turn the floor over to Mitty. Okay. So th th this one is, um, it it's as engineers and lawyers are, I think probably most accused of being a little bit boring. So I'm sorry that this is a little bit dense, uh, what okay. you have before you, but this is actually just codifying your existing practice. Um, this came about from community development from Mr. Hill. I'm not sure if he's on the computer or not. Um, your engineer has reviewed the ordinance. Uh, he's in agreement that this is just putting on the books what you're already doing. Um, what how this came about was an issue with uh, enforcing engineering permits when you didn't have anything in the code uh, that specifically spoke to engineering permits. So um, this is the process that, that Chris is already implementing. It just isn't in the code or wasn't in the code. So uh, it's proposed to be put into the code so that um, issues for, for things, just I'll give you just a, a limited example, but um, your subdivision code requires striping of parking lots, for example. So that gets approved as part of the subdivision and as part of the original development, but years later, Later, when that striping needs to be replaced or, or yeah. repaired, there was not very strong language in your code. So Good. this is to get on the books um, Chris's engineering permit that he's already mm -hmm. doing, uh, just so that there's an enforcement mechanism for that uh, should it be necessary. So with that, the language is a little a little bit boring, as I said, but I'll answer any questions if no, you have no, specific that's questions. Perfectly clear now. I understand. Perfect. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Um, any public comments in advance on this? No, Mayor. Okay. Ray, anyone have their hands raised? No, Mayor. I have not received any public comment cards on agenda item R5, um, so therefore I'm going to close public comment to agenda item R5, uh, take comments or questions from members on council. If there are none, I take a motion. You have to read something? Uh, excuse me, the title that the mayor read uh, is sufficient Clubs for reading it for yeah. purposes, but thank you for that. Go ahead. I was going to say that's why it was so complicated, because it was the title. No. <laughs> I'll make a motion to approve <laughs> regular agenda item R5. Second. We have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? We have no opposed. Diane, let the record show agenda item R5 was approved 5-0. Thank everyone for their participation in this meeting. And when is our next meeting, Diane? June. June 20th? June 20th. Can you believe we're halfway through this year already? Okay. Thank you all. We stand adjourned. Thank you. Yeah, I got you on June 20th.